throughout the nation and around the globe. From his heart to yours, it's Dear James Live, bringing you intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Weekly Wisdom and Insights with myself, Lady Jacqueline, and my fabulous co-host, Dear James, where we give you the weekly energy updates um, as it pertains to intuitive guidance from Dear James or the human design chart from myself. And we are so super excited, as always, to join you guys live. The way that we know that you are there is when you drop us a, com a comment. I was going to say compliments. That's also welcome. <laughs> <laughs> if you drop us a comment. We adore then, compliments. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, <laughs> um, if you drop us a comment, let us know where you're tuning in from. And if, if you're also watching the replay, hashtag replay, and let us also know where you're tuning in from because it's always nice to connect with each and every single one of you all across the world. Dear James. How are you doing? Hello, and I loved it. That was really the beautiful Freudian slip of comments, Freudian. compliments. <laughs> we love them all. We love when you all join us and you share your comments and compliments as we do with you. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a really beautiful, poignant moment. So we were just talking briefly before we started the show about this, and we'll jump into all the current energies with all of you. And hello, Maria. I know you're joining, I believe, from California. So welcome. And yes, Jacqueline, I mean, yes, these current energies are quite magnificent is the word that's coming to me. Poignant, magnificent, you know, full of completion and renewal. So it's a very beautiful moment, poignant moment. Very interesting because um, you articulated it so beautifully. I was actually having a little laugh internally because I had a few calls this week where people were like, I'm sorry, what is actually happening in the energy at the moment? Because people are losing their minds. <laughs> and it's so true. Like as much as it is completion and it is beautiful and it is such a, an amazing opportunity, what comes with that? The human experience. And we know that uncertainty is there when there's completion because there's new beginnings. Um, there's so much happening at the moment. We, it's, it's so beautiful because if you've been following us from the very beginning and you've been noticing how we've literally, the, the, the messages have been building one on top of the other. And if you look at it from like, you know, looking back at it, you can understand the road that we're actually headed and you're part and part excited about it because there is, it's, you know, it's polarity, it's understanding the light and the darkness. But it's the excitement of where we're at at the moment, even through the crazy, you know, that hectic energy. Uh, mm -hmm. There is opportunity. There is that beauty and that magnificence that we're definitely going to be focusing on today. Yes. And I don't know about everybody else, but we were just saying this right before we started the show. And it was last week, kind of like the tail end of last week. The energy was so... Uh, intense in a certain way that it was agitating and the lady Jacqueline and I were laughing because you were literally having to speak with yourself to breathe to calm yourself to to allow and so really right at the top of the hour from last week's energies because we are it's like we've been talking about this wave and cresting the wave and are you going to ride the wave in as destiny this beautiful at the ride with the wave in or are you in conflict because it's a six year, you know, are you in conflict and thereby the wave is going to pummel you and smash you up and roll you up onto the beach, um, probably trunks down around your ankles and all that good stuff. So, you know, mm -hmm. and that was that kind of energy. It was so just agitating. And so you have, I, for me, I had to keep catching myself. So right at the top of the hour for everyone listening, if you were experiencing that or last week, or you're experiencing it now, Remember to stay in the eye of the hurricane. In the eye of the hurricane, it's calm, it's peaceful. <laughs> While the craziness around plays out, because we don't have to engage it. We can see it coming, we can <laughs> feel it, and we can say, okay, I got you, I see, okay. Breath, release, let it go, let it pass through. Don't allow it to um, impact you in a negative shadow aspect way. We don't, we don't have to do that. It's so magnificent. Like we just before as well, we, we just before we go live, we literally 
touch base for like two minutes at most, maybe five. And it's so funny because the energy at the moment, the sun is in gate 20 and it's all about tranquility. It's all about being present in the moment, in the now. And it's like the universe is reminding us before. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Like seriously, um, the universe is literally reminding us, life is reminding us with the current energy at the moment to really be present to focus yes. in the now moment, to start worrying about what's going to happen in the future. And I know here in South Africa, all the South African babies were going through a lot. And I know also in the States as well, there was a lot happening today or, or yesterday. Yesterday, um, yes. Yeah, so it, there's a lot of turmoil. There's a lot of crisis. There's a lot of things happening. And instead of getting caught up in, oh, what is going to happen? What is the future hold for us? Uh, you know, like getting the all the what ifs, you know, the shoulds, the coulds, the words, the what ifs, the uncertainty, that logical mental energy that's trying to keep you safe. This week's energy is really a beautiful, a beautiful reminder to stay present in the now moment. You know, what can you control now? What can you focus on now? What can you be grateful for now? What can you appreciate now? What state, what, what vibration do you want to be vibrating at now? And as simple as it is, I feel the frustration of sometimes it's really challenging to let go and just be like we were laughing a little bit before like I really find it challenging and I've really it's been one of my like my things that I've been learning to master is just being is actually just taking taking a step back and going okay universe like I can push until I'm in the face this is obviously not going to work right now because it's not meant to work right now what you're showing me is to actually take a step back and just, you know, be present in this moment, whatever that looks like, washing the dishes, brushing your teeth, being on the phone, phone with a, a friend, you know? So it's, it's beautiful, simple energy through all, you explain it beautifully, which is stay in the eye of the hurricane. Mm. And there's a poignancy, again, this, is, this word is going to play out a lot. Uh, uh, the Lady Jacqueline knows this, the, all of our listeners and everybody joining us. I'm currently traveling due to a family uh, dear family member and what you just articulated Jacqueline I had this discussion with my mother we're, we're visiting my aunt who's in in need and care and I said we can get caught up in the moment of how we want it of what of what the out you know what we want all of this stuff or we simply lay all that down and be in the present moment to receive to be with her, to have that moment with her, and to really remember the, the the point of being together is to receive that because that's what we take with us. Those impressions, that moment, and so you're poignantly articulating exactly what we're experiencing. This moment is we can't, we don't know what the outcome is. We don't have the only thing we have control over is staying in the presence and the peace of interacting and receiving with one another because that's where the beauty is that's where the joy is that's that's the memory no matter the outcome is we receive that and it's been really powerful as i said to you it's been poignant and painful and yet you know and yet beautiful so this is about this moment like you just said stay allow that because what we focus on, we experience, right? So that's just a, that's a truism of, of life. So for everyone, focus on the purity, the goodness, the, the purity of the moment. Not the outcome, not the, not the perceptions, not the, you know, the resentments, the angers, the, the you know, the shoulda, woulda, couldas, none of that stuff. But go to the heart, like Jacqueline's talking about with the gates. Stay right in the present moment because that is, it, it's right. There's Anne. Taste the sweetness of the moment. Exactly. Live and experience the sweetness, the preciousness of the moment, the purity of the moment. The rest is background And there's an noise. element. Yeah, absolutely. And there's an element of surrender to that. Because in order for you to actually do that, you've got to surrender. Yeah, it's a choice. And it's also not about, um, you know, surrendering. We do speak a lot about surrendering. So there's a level of, of surrendering that needs to happen in order to truly embody awareness or awakened awareness. Um, but surrendering is not giving up. So it's not, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's being mindful of understanding who you actually are. Because with this energy as well, it's really embodying who am I? 
and what is the story of my life and what is happening in this moment and what is the bigger picture and um, you know what are my strengths and what are my desires and what are my fears and so it's really getting to know yourself and that's the beauty of of all of this because it is really a beautiful and this and this is where that beauty and that magic comes in because it's a beautiful opportunity that we're all being given right now so if you feel like things aren't you know like the train hasn't left the station yet we joke about this all the time but if you feel like things aren't moving quick enough for you or if you feel like you know there's a lot it, it, it's overwhelming you feel the fear the collective fear coming in kind of recenter yourself and, and get back to the simplistic aspects of nature and and of your surroundings and you know clean house spring clean go back to the the natural uh ways of living i want to say it's almost like appreciating and refocusing on actually getting the opportunity to do the mundane things because it's in those mundane things that you actually then realize oh hold on I'm already like I'm super grateful that I get to do this, that I have the opportunity and the time to do it instead of the negative. And that's kind of like the practicing, that practicing of that muscle that mm. we also speak about quite often. Right, because in the you know, in quote unquote the mundane and the simplistic is the magic, the awe, the magnificent. It's simply are we present, are we focused in that the sweetness of the present moment? Because otherwise we're we're distracted. We're off racing, trying to effectuate some outcome. We're we're in control mode. We're trying to control something as opposed to just surrendering, allowing, and being, and then to receive. Because like with my aunt, I'd much rather take in every single moment with her just just as it is with her, my mom, and I, the beauty, and it's not about, I, I use this as an example because I'm living it in this present moment to explain the, the current energies and, and the, you know, the magic from the universe. We have a choice. Are we in the chaos or are we in the nucleus, the, the eye, so as to receive the magnificence, the awe, the wonder of the present moment? Because I wouldn't want to ever miss that moment. It's priceless. And so that's, you know, that is a huge moral of the story. And it ties in, Jacqueline, with the overall current energies for the numbers and everything with the hexagrams. And we'll, we'll jump into that. Do you want to jump into what the gates are and, and kind of where they are mm -hmm. and what's happening from a human design perspective for everyone? Absolutely. So I briefly touched on um, the fact that the sun is in the gate 20. It is going to stay there for about two or three more days, depending on obviously time zones. Um, so what that looks like is obviously being present in the moment, being present in the now. It's looking at tranquility. It's moving. So if you look at the gene keys, it's moving from, um, well, it's moving into integrity. Let's put it that way. So it's kind of like going through the path, pathway of, of witnessing, but also awareness. So it's kind of like knowing yourself, a lot of contemplation. Um, a lot of pausing, a lot of pivoting, a lot of merging, a lot of nature. It's a very, I am in the now. It's like the now, you know, the power of now, the, the book, I think it was, yeah, Maria actually said the power of now as well. Beautiful book by Eckhart Tolle. That's a beautiful explanation, understanding of that being present in the now, what that actually looks like. So that gate 20 is also, it comes from um, your throat center. So, and then it connects with, uh, a couple of, of, of gates and one of the earth gates, which it connects with as well, is the gate 34. So it is really giving us this beautiful balance. And I say balance because you might, it, it sounds so simple to kind of be like, oh, let's just be peaceful and tranquil in the now. But then there's this part of you that's like, no, 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 I want to do, like, I want to move. I want to get things going. I want to, I want to um, utilize this energy, this burning energy that you might be feeling on the inside, because that's that gate 34 that comes from that sacred center. So for, I want to say my non-energy beings, but, but actually it's my non-sacral defined being. So if you do not have your sacral center defined in your chart, which means colored in, being mindful and conscious that you're going to be experiencing a lot more energy these, this last couple of days and for throughout this transit, because it is giving you the definition in that sacral center. So it's kind of being mindful of what energy is mine to utilize, what energy is mine to keep, and what energy is actually mine that I can um, then 
uh, have consistent access to or what is there for me to like let go of so what do i actually need to release at this time as well it is really really giving an invitation of checking in with your value as well because um with the placement of the the gate 21 and the gate 50 51 we are we are seeing definition in the world center as well so it's really looking at and asking the questions where do you feel your worth you know like what how do you how do you um how do you and how do you place your your worth on yourself like how do you um see yourself as being worthy you know so it's kind of really looking at do you find worth or do you value yourself based on how much you do or who you actually are so it's really like all those themes around that is really going to be coming to the foreground right now it's kind of asking you again like how do you find value in yourself um, how do you see yourself as self-worth? How do you um, do you give yourself enough self-care? Do you actually love yourself enough? Do you know who you are? So it's really about discovering who you are and being present in the now moment. There is going to be a time for action and you will know based on your intuition. So you will know when is the right time to act, when is the right time to say, when is the right time to do, right? Mm. So it's not forcing it, it's allowing it. It's allowing the process and the right time will come and it'll be instantaneous and you'll be like oh yes and then you won't even even get the opportunity to think about it because none of this energy is mental energy it's all um throat which is manifestation and then your sacral which is literally the life force energy within the design so it is a beautiful energy but it is really reminding us to be present in the moment um and and kind of go with the flow as much as possible does that make sense isn't that a isn't that a rich reminder? Go with the flow. <laughs> and Jacqueline, how beautiful, because again, the eclipse season that we've been in and this last eclipse had to do with, it was, it was conjunct the South Node. And so when you're talking about how do you experience self-value, how are you interacting with self-value, self-worth and so forth, it's a massive reminder. The South Node is about what we release. And so the North Node is where we're going, what we're, we're, we're moving towards and to. And so how beautiful, because again, how the, the words, actions, thoughts, things, how you interact with self-value, self-worth and everything, is it a South Node aspect, meaning is it a shadow element? And thereby it's present for you to release it, for you to come up, recognize you're doing it, and release it, let it go. And there's, yes, Natalie, go with the flow. Exactly. <laughs> it's a rich, rich, rich reminder. And I wanted, before we jump into the, the numbers from an intuitive standpoint and everything in the hexagrams, and Brigitte was talking about the freight train is so long, it's not giving me time to do the mundane. I've asked it to slow down. So Brigitte, here's, here's a, uh, an alternative. Um, discern with the freight train. Is the freight train the mundane? Or is it a freight train? Really look at, because again, one can look at something and the perception of it, the experience, the, the fear of it, the, the uh, pushback from it can create it, make it a freight train, a mountain. When in actuality, it is the mundane, it's a gift. It's being presented it feels like a freight train it's overwhelming and yet when we simply go okay let me release all of that just to be in the center of it the purity the sweetness of the moment what is this because the mundane you know right Jacqueline the mundane isn't about doing nothing or having you know easy street or it's not about not experiencing things in the mundane the the, the simplicity of things is about surrendering the freight train, surrendering the perception that it's that, surrendering the outcome, surrendering the control, so as to see it with new eyes, so as to receive the peace, the purity, the simplicity of what's truly on offer. Because it's like we're layering stuff onto something, well, that's a choice. We can let go of the layers, let go of the baggage, let go and say, okay, now in this moment, why is it present? What's on offer for me? And thereby, all of a sudden, it shifts from a freight train to the simplicity, the mundane, the purity of something. So look at that. She's saying it's definitely not the mundane. 
So then look at that from a perspective of south node, what's coming up for you to release? Why is it a freight train? Why is it yours? Mm. It may not be yeah. yours. It's so interesting how you how you looking at the south node as well and the north node. What's so fascinating through this energy of really getting to know thyself is I've been on this um, investigatory journey because you know, like line one of yeah, learning about okay, what is my representation or what is my placement of the south and north node? Because we know as well within the human design chart there is a placement, a gate placement as well as well as the astrological placement of your south and north node. And what that gives you insight into, which is super fascinating, is the South Node is like past lives, if you believe in past lives, and that's definitely looking at what you, what life or lives you potentially lived. But it actually gives you the the the, the idea of the strengths that you carry, right? What's going to be your comfort zone? So your South Node is kind of like your comfort zone, and your North Node is the mastery. So it's what are you working towards in this life? It's going to feel somewhat uncomfortable because that's part of your purpose, that's part of your mastery, right? And it's so fascinating to actually learn and understand the placement um, of the astrological placement as, as well as the human design placement because it gives you insight to actually that deep-rooted, I want to say, um, part of the story of your purpose or the reason why you're here. And what's so fascinating is I'm, I feel like I've been at the little bit of the opposite end of the spectrum, which is... I feel like my freight train isn't moving. Like I feel like it's a little bit stationary and it's not moving anywhere. And I'm like ready and I've been ready for a while. And it's so funny because as we were sitting and I'm, I'm getting this, this awareness, this aha moment, and this is exactly what happens in the now, you get the clarity, right? If you allow and you surrender and you'll be open enough to receive. And I got the clarity and I said, you know, I think the universe has been given me this time to truly understand actually who I am. And it's interesting because when you come from an intellectual standpoint and you do some research and then you've got a system like what I use with human design, uh, you get to really learn, like, you know, you get to learn and understand, but truly experiencing it as a whole as a ball game. And it's so funny because when you truly do nothing, boy, do you get to learn about who you actually are. Like when you have nothing to do and you just sit and you kind of go, okay, now what? You actually get to learn who you are, like how you think, what what yes. your next, what your fears are, like you get to learn yes. so much about yourself when you actually have nothing to do because we're so, as a society, we're so programmed to do, to keep busy, to cope, to block out, to avoid, right, with all of these things. But when you actually take a lot of that away and then the universe goes, mm, it's not the right time, you actually need to take a step back and, and go internal, Good gracious, do you really get to learn and understand who you actually are? And it's so fascinating because even that awareness of just knowing and understanding the now moment, you can actually appreciate it instead of letting it override you. And that is the gift of being in the in the now moment. It's very, isn't it? It's really powerful. And so many, so many people don't, and I'm, I'm going to say this the way I'm receiving it, don't like themselves. And so they, they do exactly what you just articulated. We busy ourselves. We procrastinate. We, we push back. We, we run down byways and, and highways and pathways that aren't ours because we're uncomfortable with in that moment, like you were just speaking to, Jacqueline, what are we being? And it's not the chatter. It's not monkey mind chatter. It's the universe allowing you to self-reflect to see yourself, see what needs to come up to be released, see how you you articulated earlier, self-love, self-value, self-worth. And by nature, a lot of humans don't like that experience. They don't want to have that experience. And so what do we do? We go and do something that's external. We look for the validation externally. We look at, you know, from our jobs, our titles, our relationships, our friendships, all of these things. And then when they don't meet muster, you know, when they don't fulfill our needs, we get angry and, you know, upset and pissy and, you know, blah, blah. And now it's all, and then it's external. Well, you, 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 as opposed to, no, no, I, 
I, I, I, I. <laughs> and so this is really, and, and we're going to jump in. I want to jump into the, the current energies and talk about, uh, which we've been talking about with the human design and the, the power and then the intuitive with the numbers, because it's the one thing in the universe, which is so brilliant. And it's just hitting me now, self-awareness. Hello. Numbers never lie. They cannot lie. They are a universal purity. They cannot lie. And so there's an interesting thing here. When I was doing today is May 25th, 2022. I went to write the number 25. And it kind of moved. And I got a 5 combined with a 3. And everything happens for a reason. Everything's purposeful. And so I was like, okay, so the 23 in the 25 and the 23 and the 25, the three and the five becoming an eight. So there was this 28 aspect. And so we've been covering this and 23 comes up a lot. It's about splitting apart. It's South Node splitting apart. And it's all about, I got to put my specs on because I want to be able to, the action is about regenerate. And the hidden influence is the receptive to yield. Here we're talking about surrender, yield. And then the underlying cause is determination breakthrough. The overall numbers today, 525, 2022, becomes an 18, which becomes a 9. It's about completion, fulfillment, moving to the new. And so we've got this, and there's this beautiful quote that goes with hexagram 23. And it says, all of life will not change you. It unfolds as a way to unmask you. And here we were just saying, we, we get uncomfortable. We don't like seeing ourselves, dealing with ourselves, being in the moment of quietness with ourselves. So it doesn't change us. It unfolds so as to unmask us, to unlayer us, so that we don't need the masks. We don't want the masks. So that's part of the splitting apart. We're going to get rid of the masks. We're going to get rid of who we think we are and what we think we need and titles and you know, all these things, blah, blah, blah. At, the, at your center, that's not who you are. And so the main hexagram today is 25. And you're going to see how the 28, there's a quote from 28. But 25, hexagram 25, is about innocence. And the action is open. It's like open to the way. The hidden influence is development to flower. And then the underlining cause is pushing upward, ascend. So here's a nine. We're talking about this wave, about are you riding the wave in, ascend? Are you riding the wave in? Are you pushing upward? Or are you in conflict, chaos? Are you spiraling downward and so forth? And the, there's a beautiful quote and a statement. The first one is, if you don't know what cannot be done, you will accomplish great things. So it speaks to the fact of, are you in a place of limitation, lack, boxing yourself in, telling you what you can't have and why you can't have it? Or are you accomplishing great things? Because as most, you know, uh, your parents teach you, other mentors, people in your life teach you, you can be anything. You can accomplish anything. And the empowerment of that. And the quote is from... Ishikawa Takabuko, if I got that right, and it says, like a kite cut from the string, lightly the soul of my youth has taken flight, because it's from the youth, because we're innocent, you know, there's an innocence about our youth, we don't know what we can't do, we don't know that there are boundaries and limitations, because there aren't any, <laughs> we're still in the beauty of our, of our innocence, of our greatness, of our divinity. And so it's, it speaks to the Taoist perspective honors three treasures. C, C-I-C, is the ability to know compassion when relating to others, where you treat all experiences as if it is a part of you. This is called owning your condition. Jean is your appreciation for the uncarved block or the ever-changing aspect of life by remaining malleable in your observations and simple in your desires. There we're talking about the mundane, the simplistic. 
Now this one is really hard for I, I may butcher this, but it says Bugan Wei Zhenji Jian. Woo, do that one three times fast, <laughs> Jacqueline. <laughs> this, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, this is how you do not play the host. We talked about this some shows back, where we do not play the host, but we remain the guest of a greater unfolding. You rise from sleep where your mind was open and then climb back into a type of sensory awareness that classifies everything. Just as you do in dreams, it is important to hover at the doorway of perception without judgment or attachment to an outcome. Innocence asks you to keep an open mind so that the creative can lead you toward an environment that is beneficial to you, suggested by the hidden influence of development. Where pushing upward required action, innocence is best developed through non action. You were just speaking to this the pushing forward versus the allowing. Step back and allow events to show you what and why a situation is unfolding. Without this purity of perception, calamity can ensue. Yet even in calamity, you can discover the sage's greatest lesson, tranquility in disturbance. Synchronize your inner thoughts to events. Know that you are free of blame if you follow the course of events rather than attempt to coerce a solution for the sake of speed or gratification. I'm laughing because you and I were just talking about that. <laughs> Be like the child who has not learned, not yet learned, to smile but simply remains observant to unfolding events. And lastly, just this piece of, because it talks about when you turn back, you are returned to a state of innocence. Approaching the gateway of perception, you can cherish the opportunity not to know to move beyond all sense of boundaries. And there's this beauty in the fact that it says there are three ways. Innocence allows you to see how events cultivate your power of your te. It requires three things. This is so simple. Compassion when relating to others. An appreciation for the uncarved block, meaning the unfolding events of life and the ever-changing aspect of life by remaining simple in your desires, not playing the host, but remaining, but remaining the guest of a greater unfolding. Those are the three aspects. And here's the beauty of this moment, because it's, it's a critical mass moment. That was the last number, 28 is critical mass. It means we need to adjust. It's hidden influence is the creative to initiate, and it's underlining causes nourishing vision to nurture and so when you see all these combined and here's the culminating statement of 28 to follow the energy of life you will discover that it is always seeking the best of what you might become so you can see how we miss out see if we're distracted like the analogy with my current experience or like you were just is stating like Brigitte is stating with the, the freight train if we're distracted, if our attention is on that, that is the experience we will have. Versus to follow the energy of life, to be the guest, you will discover that it is always seeking the best of what you might become. Well, I know in that moment, I, the last two and a half days of, of by my mom and I choosing not to be distracted, let's just stay in the moment, be in the moment with my aunt, her sister. What a, what a gift, the expansion, the beauty, the purity, and yes, pain. And yet, even in that, it's beautiful and profound. So this is the message, this is the energy. And you know, you and the, the Lady Jacqueline and I, we don't make this up. <laughs> Here are the you know here are the numbers here's the here's the design here's the human gates and they come in so beautifully right on time the the beautiful tapestry that unfolds for us mm -hmm. absolutely i mean it, it it is it really is so beautiful and then it kind of brings uh it opens the doorway to kind of also then ask yourself the questions of what fears you know are coming up at this time like we, we've been speaking about the fact that the eclipse was a massive massive shift an energetic shift a collective shift a conscious shift 
um, we are still in Mercury retrograde. I think Pluto in retrograde as well. Pluto in retrograde. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Yes. So, I mean, there's a lot of retrograde happening. Mercury is still going to be retrograde until the third of June, if I'm not mistaken. So there's still a lot of reflection, you know, uh, reconnection, all the re's. Um, and and what does that mean? It means that you you've been given such a beautiful opportunity to also shine light on what is still what needs to be let go of like so what are you what are you still holding on to you know that fear and it's all got to do around and it's so beautiful because it's like a puzzle piece that it's been that's been put together because each week and each month we're getting the opportunity to work through and to to um highlight a different aspect you know and and this week it really is about your self-worth it's about the value that you give yourself in doing it's about um you know, are you are you trying to avoid or are you actually present in the now moment? Are you tranquil in the trust and the knowing that whatever you desire is already there waiting for you, all you're doing is matching up to it, you know, and anything that is keeping you from living that truth and, and, and embodying that kind of essence, that is the key. That's kind of what's coming up for you. So it is, and that's why we're talking about it being such a beautiful opportunity. Um but it is still part of the human experience. You're still going to have that human experience, you know, but it's kind of being kind to yourself. And last week I think we spoke about that where we said it's really about being kind to yourself as you go through it, as you experience all the emotions that you might be feeling while you go through being now in the present moment or, or, um, or what that actually looks like as well. Mm, yes. And here's Maria saying, when we are in stillness, we allow for its purity to manifest. Yes, and here, look, to flower, you know, to unfold, to be the guest in the journey. So I want to, and I'm going back with Brigitte here, it's a convergence of, of a ton of projects and stuff. Ask yourself, uh, that have a time limit. Okay, yes, maybe no. It's like the, you know, I'm, I'm reminded, Jacqueline, of the, the Greek uh, plate spinners. And they have 16 plates in the air, and they're all spinning on the dowel rods. And the, the worry, the issue, the concern is, what happens if one of the plates drops? Well, you know, it's, it's a broken plate. And yet, continuing with the Greek, uh, the Greek tradition and everything, you know, you go to a Greek wedding and they're throwing plates on the ground. You know, it's a, it's a thing. It's like a celebration. It's an act of celebration. It's an act of, of uh, newness, continuing, you know, continuity. It's this celebration. So... Again, for everyone listening, for Brigitte specifically, and yes, for everybody in the current energies, what happened? The fear is what happens if the plate falls, if a plate falls and drops? Well, it'll break, it'll shatter. Okay, well, allow yourself the opportunity to ask, is it meant to? Because again, if if we're so caught up in the plate not breaking, in controlling the outcome, then we are playing host. As opposed to the, the uncarved block being, being, how are we compassionate with ourselves and others? How are we interacting and dealing with, perceiving the uncarved block? And are we playing host? Or are we being the guest in the greater unfolding. And I love that because you, the Lady Jacqueline, love the practical. I do too. I'm a Virgo. I love practical. <laughs> I love the I love the spirituality and the unseen and the, you know, the intuitive essence of all of it. Mm -hmm. And yet here, look, in the in the hexagram, in the I Ching, here is the literalness and the practicalness of how are you interacting with these things? Why, why are we seeing these things as a freight train and why is there an impending deadline and what happens, what truly happens, not what happens on the surface. That's easy. Oh, if I don't get this done and that, then this doesn't happen and that doesn't happen and this person doesn't get this and, and off the train goes. There's the freight. But that's on the surface. What happens if plate number 12 drops? What really happens? And is it already really intended? Is it part of the greater unfolding, the greater tapestry? So 
you know, there's there's a beauty in this. It, it brings in that statement of um, the universe is never going to give you something that you can't handle, right? And it's so beautiful because what you're saying is is it's exactly what I actually I was like, oh, that makes so much sense. So what it's easier said than done you know the the collective energy right now is being present in the now moment but if you really are for example juggling 500 things you're a mom you've got kids you've got a full-time job then you've got to come home and maybe make dinner like there's a lot for you to actually do and if you're looking at this and you're articulating it so beautifully you're you're kind of you know saying that um it's kind of looking at what you're attaching to again and, and also looking at, and reframing the way you're approaching it and kind of saying, well, I've been gifted this opportunity to be able to coordinate, manage, work within a team where these products need to be done. This is my gift. Like this is what the li life is giving me this opportunity to show up to, right? So how can I be the best version of myself to show up in the situation, even though there are deadlines, even though there are, you know, other people that are maybe not in alignment with themselves and they're maybe a little bit more in the shadow, stress, you know, feeling the crisis, feeling the, the time constraints. But you have this beautiful opportunity to get to know yourself in that situation. How do you respond? How do you react? What's coming up? What can be cleared? What can you step into? What version of yourself do you really want to embody in that moment? Or And can you have access to? Or like, which one do you have access to, you know, in that moment? Because life is giving you this opportunity because it's a gift and when you go into that circumstance yes. as with that state and with that mindset of actually hold on this is a gift and listen it's going to take practice because remember this is all part of the human experience so i don't take away at all you know the stress and the human experience that it can give you or can bring but it's really going to require you to to practice this reframing of your mindset and kind of giving gratitude for the fact that you have the strength that you've been gifted this opportunity and you can learn not only about yourself but you can also learn and you can inspire and you can empower other people around you to step into their highest expression by you you know dealing with it in a in a way of okay so we have you know say for example in that tangible experience three projects that need to get done what happens if one doesn't get done? Oh, well, then we restructure, we adapt, we get creative, we, you know, do what we need to do because we're capable. So again, it's like, it's just the mindset. It's the, it's the reframing of the vibration or the state so that you're actually approaching every situation right now because yes. it is still the human experience. And, right. and that's why we kind of say it's like the, the, the yoking of both the practical and that spiritual. It's like what's happening in the energy. Okay. What's happening practically and how can we kind of, bridge the gap so that we can really truly get all of the juiciness that black has to offer yeah. and that we signed up for. Literally, I kept hearing reframe the experience, reframe the experience, reframe the experience. <laughs> and you're literally <laughs> articulating a reframe. Yeah. It, right. You heard it because that is yeah. exactly what it is because in that analogy, like you were saying too, okay, so reframe the experience, like you, the, the working mom with children and cooking and housework and family and life and, and the career and the whole shebang. And it was reframe the experience. How do you bring, how do you bring out and in the best of every person in the, in the unit? And this is funny because the topic that the overall energy that they gave me was familial hyphen familiar uh, matters. So familial matters, familiar matters, and how it affects, A-F-F-E-C-T-S, how it affects the whole, W-H-O-L-E. And look at what we're talking about and how when we reframe something, that when we are in our innocence and we're, we're mindful of how we treat others, we're, how we interact with the uncarved block, and that we're being the guest, not the host, of the greater unfolding, the greater tapestry, and we're Mercury retrograde, Pluto retrograde, eclipse season, south node, releasing things, not to get lost. So here's the thing. How do you reframe that moment to say, well, maybe I don't have to be the Herculean matriarch and so forth. Maybe I need to engage my children in helping to, and my husband or spouse or partner in the preparation of the meal, the nourishment, the familial matter so that it changes the whole. We empower others. 
what does that mean? We got to release control because if we're caught up in the control, if we're caught up in the label, if we're caught up in the mindset that it's, I got to do all this and it's like my 16 plates and if I'm not willing to give, there's a plate for you and there's a plate for you and there's a plate for you, the plates are still spinning. They haven't dropped. They haven't broken. Have we expanded the energy? Have we expanded the circle? Have we reframed the experience? Yes. And the only reason we won't do that is because, oh, well, fear, you might not pick up your weight or you might drop your plate or I might be late, you know. If you're caught up in the storm, you're going to experience the storm. Mm -hmm. If you're caught, if you're in the complete, if you're in the, the center, you know, the purity of the center, yeah. well, then you'll, you know, because look, kids, right? They're, they're giving me the image of kids, you know, finger painting and body painting, finger painting, and it's chalk on the sidewalk and it's all messy. Life is messy. And out of that chaos, that mess, quote unquote, air quotes here, isn't there joy? Isn't there, you know, like creativity, joy? The memory that you, opportunity, the memory that we create in the mess, in the chaos. We just have to be willing to do it. So I look down and I'm like, <laughs> well, you know, I was, I was stopping there. There was a, there was that quiet pause because I looked down because they literally said, because, and I was like, this quietness, and I go, oh, critical mass. Because we're at a critical mass. We're at a critical turning point. And what's on offer? Go with the flow. Ride the wave in. Destiny. <laughs> Ride the high wave in. As opposed to being pummeled by it because you're in conflict with destiny. You're trying to control and look at how this is playing out Jacqueline right with our governments with our companies with our peoples individuals they're in conflict with where we're going with destiny instead of yeah it's chaotic it's messy and I mean that in the sense of the advancement the change feels it's the uncarved block mm. But how well, there you... is also a lot of chaos and there's a lot of mess, you know, so right. it, it, it's a storm. Right. But it's, it's understanding, you know, yeah, it's, exa it's exactly that. It's understanding uh, that you have the choice and that you have the responsibility That's of how choice. you can approach it. Yeah. It's how are you participating? So are you participating in the chaos, in the conflict, in the shadow, in the, you know, are you perpetuating that and, and amplifying that, crescendoing that? Or are you in the peace, the ease, the grace, the, the flow, the comfort, the, the continuity, the goodness? Because the train, you know, and it's, it's a bullet train, right? It's not a freight train. It's a bullet train. <laughs> the train's left the station. Mm -hmm. The arc of time And it doesn't mean you're advances. not going to feel. No. Like it doesn't mean it doesn't mean you're not gonna feel. It doesn't take away the idea of like, okay, cool, we're not gonna we're not gonna respond, we're not gonna feel. Of course you're gonna feel, you know, if something happens, there's been a lot that's happening and that's happened. Um, you're gonna have that human experience, you're gonna you're gonna feel, you're gonna experience emotions, you're gonna if you're an impact, you're really gonna take on that collective energy um that you can draw wisdom from and then you let it go. And that's why again, like last week we spoke about beautiful practices and principles or, or rituals that can allow you to to stay in that sense of of the storm the eye of the hurricane as as dear james has so beautifully articulated you know to stay present in the now moment um it doesn't mean you're taking away from the human experience it's part of the human experience you know being present in the now is having the awareness of okay what is keeping me from being just present in this now moment and then working on it that's the practical, that's, that's the journey, that's the actual work that we all talk about. They're asking me, they're asking me, Jacqueline, the unseen is asking me to ask you, where is the sun going? What are the upcoming gates for the sun in the human design chart? There's some, because they're saying, where, ask her, where is the sun going? <laughs> where is the sun and it's, going? And, and very interesting, 
the sun, S-U-N, yes, the sun. And it's also then they're speaking to the sun, the S-O-N. Where is the sun going? And so one would relate that. Um, I'm not able to just find the... Because... The, 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 and they're showing me the they're showing me the um, the sun card in the tarot, and it is literally the the newborn, if you will, the 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 nude newborn riding horseback, and no saddle horseback with the radiant sun. It's the most positive, empowering, powerful card in the tarot. It means there there is no wrong. So where are the where are the gates for the sun? So that's actually the sun is moving into the gate 16 and um, the earth is in the gate 9. So the 16 is like, um, it's all about skill. It's, it's being a natural, being naturally skilled at something, right? There's a lot of creativity to it. There's a lot of obviously youthfulness to it, like excitement, being able to just like do it and then kind of like figure out everything a little bit later. So that's that doing energy. Um, and, and then with obviously the focus, being grounded in the focus, what are you focusing your attention on, your energy on, right? It's also a multi, like multi faceted, I almost want to say, because there is this, there's this energy of being beautifully skilled. And this is what's so funny because we spoke about the idea of, you're not going to give, you're not going to receive anything, or you're not going to be faced with anything that you aren't able to deal with, right? That you aren't skilled exactly. enough to deal with, and yet we have the gates of scene. It's also about looking at which skill you can focus on mastering as well. And then also the 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 polarity side, the opposite end of the spectrum, the shadow, is looking at where do you feel inadequate. So again, it's looking at that self-worth. So it's, if you look at the journey that we're traveling through the energies that we're, we're uh, gaining access to, it's kind of going, being present in the now moment, knowing who you are, checking in with your self-worth, where do you place value or how do you value yourself, right? And then kind of going, we're moving into the space of what skills do we need in order to take action, in order to get the ball rolling, in order to take forward motion, but also looking at, what are we naturally gifted at? Where are we putting our focus? Where are we putting our energetic focus? And then also, again, are we still holding on to that fear that we're not good enough, that we don't know enough, mm -hmm. right? It's like that we can't go deep enough. So here, look at how they're, they're, they asked to ask you, where's the sun going? S-U-N, S-O-N. It's gate 16, and it's about having the skills. And so immediate, and then they, should, they were showing us the sun tarot card. Uh, the, the, uh, the sun in the tarot deck, and it's the most auspicious, positive card in the deck. And there, and today's energy, hexagram 25, which is about innocence, the image on the tarot card is of a, a, a newborn, in essence, a, a, a naked youth on a bareback horse with the radiant sun. So the message for everyone we, we, when you assemble this all together is the beauty of the I am presence. It's the alignment with your authentic self. You have the skill, you have everything. And are you in alignment? And it's not even if because you will be, you'll be in alignment with your authentic, pure, true self. It's the radiant sun. It's uh, she, uh, the Lady Jacqueline spoke to the facets, the facets, the colors of the, the multifaceted radiance of the rainbow, of, of the, the spectrum of the universe is the way they're saying it to me. This will be the energy that we, we move into. We leave behind the darkness, the shadows, the, the lack. And we walk in, we step into the, the, the radiance of the sun. S-O-N, S-U-N. And with that, it's full spectrum. It's full. It's there's the technicolor. So they're saying they're they're letting everyone know where's the sun going. Well, that's it. It's that you are everything. You have everything you need. Full radiance. Full spectrum. Technicolor. And 
not being afraid because what are people, the people that are in conflict, 2022, a six year, right? Conflict, destiny. Well, if you're in conflict, it's because you're afraid of what you're losing, what you perceive to be lost, losing. It's a perception versus the perception, the belief that you're gaining something because you're going to receive. Where's Where's the sun going? <laughs> not where it's been. <laughs> They're not talking, the right? Right. They're not asking. They didn't ask the Lady Jacqueline, where's the sun been? <laughs> I want to yeah. go back there. They didn't yeah, ask her yeah. that where question. Are going? Where, are where you is the sun now? going? And look, mic drop moment. There she is. There's the Lady Jacqueline with the human design. Like, uh-huh. Oh, oh. Well, it's going to gate 16. And as you articulate it as well, it's grounded. So it means yeah. it's tangible. It's literal. It's, it's real. It's not mental. It's not a thought. It's tangible. And this will yeah. be our practical. practical. Beautiful. That's a great, I think we've, we've all been given an absolutely beautiful, great, like fantastic reminder. Um, of where we're headed and and where we are in this present moment um yeah it's as always it's absolutely and, so spectacular mm -hmm. and not and just to, and not to fear the change yeah. not to fear the uncarved block yeah yep as always such beautiful reminders and beautiful mic drop moments there's so <laughs> many nuggets of wisdom like so, so many moments where we just go, oh, oh that's kind of quite easy. Like we actually literally had a moment of silence like, <laughs> where we were both processing, oh, wait, did, we have, did that actually happen? Yeah, did that happen? So thank you, as always, thank you so much for tuning in each week with us and for staying with us through the entire hour. It is absolutely a pleasure to hold space for all of you. Um, dear James, it is... As always, fantastic to be in your energy. I, I always, I'm in awe, and I said this to the Lady Jacqueline, the, the magic and the awe of the universe, of the unseen, and how in the greater tapestry. And so for all of you, it is on, it's truly an honor and a privilege to be here every single week with you all, with the Lady Jacqueline, and just to hold this space, as she says, and to be in this moment with all of you, and to be in the awe and wonder of the universe and the unseen and the greater unfolding it's magic and i'm i pinch myself all the time of the of just the humility and the grace and the 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 privilege so thank you all so 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 much because we love you all your comments and your your questions and your shares and this collective moment that comes in is just i adore it and i adore all of you so and the lady jacqueline you know i adore you <laughs> <laughs> i'm like uh-huh 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 I, I got my hand puppets raised because i love these moments together so thank you all so so much we will be back next week yes thank you and have a beautiful 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 rest of your week Stay in the present moment, be kind to yourself, and work through the human experience that we call life. Sending you loves. You've been listening to Dear James Live. Gain intuitive insight, answers, and advice to your life questions and so much more by tuning in next week and visiting DearJames.com.